2011 15-inch MacBook Pro keyboard replacement. Please note is the difficulty of this replacement, as the DVD drive and the logic board will have to be removed. Remove seven Phillips head screws starting in the top left corner and going around the contour of the MacBook. These are the shorter screws. Now remove the three long Phillips head screws. Those 10 screws will release the cover. Go ahead and lift it and remove it. Disconnect the battery before we begin. Logic board removal. Remove three T6 screws that are securing the right fan. You can unscrew them, but leave them in place. This will make it easier to track them. Lift the fan and disconnect it from the logic board. Remove the three T6 screws securing the left fan. Again, leave them in place. Lift up the fan and disconnect it from the logic board. Remove the two Phillips head screws securing the keyboard guard. Lift up and remove the guard. Inspect 11 connections going around the contour of the logic board. Familiarize yourself with them. Disconnect the LVDS cable first. Lift up the lever and slide it out of the socket. Be careful when making this disconnection. Now disconnect the keyboard backlight. Lift up the lever and pull out the connection. Disconnect the eyesight camera. Disconnect the Wi-Fi cable. Disconnect the DVD drive. Disconnect the right speaker. Disconnect the hard drive cable. Disconnect the trackpad. Lift up the lever and disconnect the keyboard connection. Disconnect the battery life indicator. Inspect and find the seven logic board T6 screws. Remove the seven T6 screws. Pry out the logic board at an angle, left side up first. Be careful, the microphone might still be connected and you'll have to pry that apart. Disconnect the DC inboard. Keyboard removal. Begin by removing the two Wi-Fi card bracket screws. The one on the right is the short Phillips head screw. And the one on the left is the long Phillips head screw. Push the Wi-Fi card bracket out of the way. Remove the three DVD drive Phillips head screws. Lift the drive up at an angle and move it out of the way. Remove the two Phillips head mid wall screws. You can unscrew them, leave them in place. This will make it easier to track them. Remove the mid wall. Remove the Wi Fi antenna Phillips head screw. Remove the two Phillips head screws that are securing the power button. They're distinctly small and difficult to mix up with other screws. Remove the antenna bracket. Pry the cables apart and pry out the power button.
peel back the three back white layers with tweezers or your hand. Be gentle when doing this, you can easily rip the bottom layer. Peel back any of the cables that are in the way, like the trackpad and the keyboard cable. Remove 51 Phillips head screws securing the keyboard in place. Once removed, the keyboard will look like this. Keyboard installation. Insert the new keyboard and secure it with the 51 Phillips head screws. Once the keyboard is secure, take out the backlight layers and peel away the guide hole guard. With both guide holes exposed, use the guide holes to properly align the backlight. This step cannot be skipped. The backlight will not work if you do not align it properly. Once properly aligned, tuck in all the cables. Install the mid wall. Secure it with the two Phillips head screws. Tuck in the power button. Once tucked in, go ahead and secure it with the two Phillips head screws. They're the distinctly short screws. Install the Wi-Fi antenna bracket. Make sure it goes over all the cables. Install the Wi-Fi antenna bracket screw. Make sure to loop it through the antenna cable loop. Install the DVD drive. Just place it into its socket. Drop it in and secure it with three Phillips head screws. Place the bracket over it and install the two Phillips head screws, the short one on the right and the long one on the left. Logic board installation. Connect the DC inboard to the logic board. Insert the logic board in at an angle, right side in first, and drop it in. Make sure to move as many cables as you can out of the way. It's okay, we'll be prying all these cables out. Pry out any trap cables now. Go over all the connections. You should have 11 connections in exposed in total. Install the 7T6 screws to secure the logic board in place. Connect the keyboard backlight. Push it into its socket and then click down on the locking lever. Connect the EyeSight camera. Connect the Wi-Fi cable. Connect the DVD drive. 
connect the right speaker. Connect the hard drive SATA cable. Connect the trackpad. Connect the keyboard. Make sure that the lever is up when you pry this into the socket. This is one of the most hardest connections to make. Make sure you're gentle with this and don't damage your ribbon cable. Once it's pried in all the way, go ahead and lock in the locking lever. Connect the battery life indicator. Lastly, connect the LVDS cable. Be gentle when making this connection. You can damage the socket. Take your time. Once it's locked in all the way, go ahead and lock the locking mechanism. Install the right fan. Secure the three T6 screws connected to the logic board. Install the left fan. Secure the three T6 screws connected to the logic board as well. Install the keyboard guard cover. Attach the two Phillips head screws. Reconnect the battery. Place the cover back. Install the three long Phillips head screws first. Starting in the top right corner, going left. Now install the seven short Phillips head screws, starting in the top left corner and going around the contour of the MacBook. 